What's up you guys? Tonight I am playing at the gardens, playing 5-5-10. So wish me luck and hit that intro. Cheers. With the guy Branson, who has the Branson poker logs. <laughs> no! No! Let's go, let's go! <laughs> Tell him he's got a lot of class, and it's all low. Like I said, I'm playing 5-5-10 at the Gardens, bought in for $800, and the first couple hands I play are small pocket pairs. I try to set mine, but I miss, so I let them go. For me, I don't think you need to fight for every pot that you're involved in, and sometimes it's just better to give up. Anyway, this leads me to my first big pot of the day. I have ace-king off on the button, and the low jack opens to $45. His name's Eddie, he's a friend of mine. But that doesn't mean I am going to play any different. I make a standard 3-bet to $135. Well, Eddie's having none of that, and he 4-bets to $345, and now there's a few things I'm thinking about. One, I only have $720 total. If I go all in, I really have no fold equity. He's already way too invested to fold. Number two, 4-bets are usually not bluffs. Most likely, I'm up against jacks, plus, and ace-king. Maybe he decides to go spicy with one or two other hands, but maybe not. Okay, time for some math. If I go all in, it's $585 more to possibly win a pot of $1,460. This means I need over 40% equity for this move to be profitable. Against a range of jacks, plus, and ace-king, I know I have about 40% equity, so it makes it a pretty neutral decision. I could go all in, I could fold, or I could possibly choose option three. I don't have any fold equity now, but if I just call, we see the flop and he checks, I might be able to go all in and push him off a chop if he's holding ace king as well. Okay, I call and the flop comes king five jack with two diamonds, Eddie checks, I hit the king, I only have about a half pot bet left, I go all in for $375, Eddie calls, the turn is a 10, river 9, I show my cards, but Eddie shows pocket jacks for a set and takes it down. I switch tables, rebuy for another $800, and a little later I pick up pocket 7s on the straddle. There's a double straddle to $20, the button limps, the big blind limps, and limping from late position, neither of these players should be strong, so I raise to $100, mostly hoping to just take it down right now, but the button calls and we're heads up to a flop of 4 jack deuce rainbow. There's not a lot going on here. I put out a small C bet of $80, and once again, the button calls. When she limp calls from the button preflop, then calls this flop, I think she often has a pocket pair like pocket 5s through pocket 8s, or a mediocre jack like jack 9 suited, jack 10 off, maybe jack queen off, something like that. The turn comes an ace, great card. This hits my range a lot more than hers. I could have easily c bet with an ace high and now hit top pair, so I turn my hand into a bluff and I bet $200. She pauses, then goes all in for $530. Definitely not what I wanted to see. I don't think this is ever a bluff. I fold, and she shows pocket jacks. She limped from the button, then just called my raise, then flopped top set. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's pretty hard for me to put her on pocket jacks there, but anyway, nice hand. Things are not going well today. I'm already in for $2,000 total. I typically bring two and a half to three buy-ins to the casino to avoid tilt play. So if I lose this, well, that is it for me. I pick up ace 10 off in the small blind, the under the gun and button limp. I avoid limping at all costs. So I raise to $55. Only the button calls and the flop comes four, four, three with two clubs. This board doesn't connect with my range as the preflop aggressor. I could still choose to see bet, but I decide to check this time. I still have a good amount of showdown value with ace high. The button checks and we see an eight on the turn. I think the button would have likely bet the flop if he had a pocket pair. So unless he hit the eight, I'm thinking I have the best hand. Still, I check just trying to get to showdown, but the button has other plans. He bets $100. Like I said, I think there's a good chance I have the best hand with ace high, plus I still have two overs, so I call, and the river comes a jack. 
I check one more time, hoping he does not fire again. He gives up and flips over King-7 off for a bluff, and we win with ace high. Ladies and gentlemen, so hard to find. we got him. Just kidding, you guys. No smug looks from me, but moving on, I get jack eight of diamonds in the straddle. The action folds to the small blind, and he opens to $25. The big blind calls. I make the call, and we're three ways to a flop of deuce, 10, eight with two diamonds. The small blind checks. The big blind bets $45, and it's on me. I have a pair and a flush draw, so no matter what, I should have a good amount of equity in this hand. Let's turn up the heat. I raise to $140 and the big blind calls. The turn is the ace of diamonds. We hit the flush. The big blind checks, and I bet $175 now. I'm trying to charge two pair hands, sets, or a hand like king 10 or queen 10 with a diamond. Unfortunately, he lets his hand go. He probably had a 10 with no diamond or a straight draw, but still, I think a bet was the right move. Okay, we are building momentum, chipping up, it's time to get a top five hand. I pick up pocket jacks in the small blind. The button limps and I raise it up to $50. Only the button calls were heads up to a flop of king, deuce, deuce, rainbow. I should have a lot of kings in my range. I see bet $35, but the button raises to 100. He shouldn't have a deuce very often. Probably only ace deuce suited or maybe ace deuce off. Since he limp called preflop, he shouldn't have a strong king like ace king or king queen. I guess he could be playing aggressively with a mediocre king, but I also think sometimes people see a small bet and they just assume weakness, so they try to attack. In reality, on a dry paired board, I would bet small with any hand, but anyway, all things considered, I think jacks are too strong to fold just yet. I make the call and the turn is a queen. I check, and he checks back. I think he would have bet again if he had a two, so in my head, I rule that out now, and we're off to a river which comes a three, not changing anything. I check, and now he bets $225, a pretty sizable bet. So what makes sense here? Pocket threes that got lucky and river to full house? Maybe a king? Would a mediocre king really want to bet big on the river? I don't know, my gut is telling me to call, so I toss in the chips. Well, sometimes my gut is wrong, but not this time. My opponent shows a jack nine off and we take down the pot. Next up, I get ace jack off in the big blind. The low jack, high jack, button, and small blind all limp. Ace jack is definitely good enough for a raise, so I make it $75. That thins the field a little bit. But the hijack and button aren't scared. They make the call and we're three ways to a flop of ace queen six with two spades. Since my opponents both limp called and didn't raise preflop, they shouldn't have a better ace than me. This means the only hands beating me should be pocket sixes or ace six suited, which there's only one combination of. I put out a C bet of $90. Only the hijack calls and the turn is the 10 of diamonds. I would have expected the hijack to raise quite frequently if he had pocket sixes or a six. So unless he turns two pair, I think I have the best hand. He has $400 left. I go all in trying to target a weaker ace or draw, but he folds and we take it down. Okay, I'm clawing my way back closer and closer to being even and what better than a big pocket pair? I get pocket queens in the low jack. I open to $35, the hijack calls, then the small blind goes all in for $140. I decide to re-raise to $250. If the hijack wants to play, I want to start building a side pot now, but the hijack folds, we're off to a run out which comes six, king, nine, king, 10, the small blind unfortunately flips over ace king and he takes it down. Next, I pick up pocket nines in the cutoff, the hijack limps and I raise to $45. The straddle and hijack call and the flop comes out king king deuce rainbow. Action checks to me, this board is super dry and unless one of my opponents has a king, I should have the best hand here. I put out a small C bet of $40 for value against smaller pocket pairs and also to prevent my opponents from seeing a free card that could give them a higher pair than mine. The straddle folds, but the hijack calls and the turn comes a 10. The hijack checks, 
he could still have a king as played, so I'm happy to check back and try to get to showdown now. The river is a three. He checks to me. I think I have the best hand given the action, but I don't think I'm getting called here by worse. So I check. He sheepishly says he has two pair. I flip my cards and they're good. It's getting late. We're down to the final hand on the vlog and it is a big one, guys. I'm still down almost $600. So the question is, will I make it back to even or am I going to fall deep into an unrecoverable hole of despair? I pick up ace five of spades on the button, the action folds to me, and I have a pretty standard open to $35. Only the straddle calls, and we're heads up to a flop of ace four six with two clubs. The straddle checks, and I decide to check back this time with top pair. And I know what you're thinking. If you play like that, you're not going to win any money. Your, your pot's so small, I can barely see it. Well, maybe small now, but the guys at my table, they saw it. They can vouch for me. It gets bigger. It gets bigger. It gets bigger. Anyway, jokes aside, I checked because this particular opponent showed a lot of aggression when people checked. The turn comes another ace. We have trips now. Unfortunately, he checks and I have to start putting in money now. I bet $35 and he calls. The river is a five. We hit a full house. The straddle checks and now I bet big $150. Because I didn't see bet the flop, he's probably thinking I don't have an ace, so I'm hoping this river bet looks like a bluff. He thinks for about 30 seconds, he doesn't fold, he doesn't call, which means he puts in a raise to $450. I'm fist pumping at this point. I'm really hoping he has a big hand like a smaller full house or possibly a straight. The only hand that beats me is ace six. And if he has that, I guess I'm going broke. I go all in for $1,300 and he doesn't snap call. So I know I have the best hand, but he ends up letting it go, unfortunately. Honestly, I think he was just bluffing, but let me know what you guys think. And with that, I rack up and end my session. Well, that session was a roller coaster. <laughs> I... Dug myself a hole pretty early. I was down 1.4K at the lowest, but I clawed back with some hero calls and then that last hand where I rivered a full house. Um, I think I induced him to bluff. I don't think he had anything, but um, I guess I'll never know. But anyways, thanks for watching. Tonight I was in for a total of $2,000 and I was out for 1935. <laughs> So I was uh, down $65, but when you're down 1.4K at one point, down 65 does not seem bad at all. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.